welcome back to my channel. My name is Kelsey and I'm here today to do another 24 hour readathon. So if you saw my video last November for roughly 24 hours, I decided to read manga. I'm very much in a manga mood. Um, I have quite a bit of books here that I would like to get through. So I decided to just read manga for 24 hours. It won't be the full 24 hours. I'm still gonna go to bed. Um, if I have to do things tomorrow, I'll still do things. But for these next couple of hours, I would like to fully dedicate my reading time to reading manga. Tomorrow is Victoria Day in Canada. So we have a day off, which is lovely and fantastic. Love that, living for it. My boyfriend decided to ruin my plans by wor not working. I don't know. I know he's a citizen of Canada and also has Victoria Day, but I really did not think about him also being home and wanting to do stuff with me um, and really ruining and disrupting the elements of my humble abode. But alas, right now he is at hockey, so we're gonna start now. It is 7.30. I currently have rice cooking on the stove. I'm gonna have some curry with it. Um, but while the rice is cooking, I am going to start my first manga of the next 24 hours, which is Blood on the Tracks Volume 1 by Shuzo Oshimi. I have heard nothing but fantastic things about this series, so I really, really want to give it a try. I have heard that this horror manga is, like, amazing, and I want to, like, join the crew. So I did request it from my library for the purpose of this video, and I will be reading this while I wait for my rice to cook. And like the last video, what I'm going to do is come here, summarize what the manga that I will be reading is, finish it, come give a review just because I will most probably be spending these 24 hours in my house so it just makes sense to add this maybe I'll add some b-roll um, but I'm horrendous at b-roll so it could be that I forget and my apologies to you all but we're gonna start with blood on the tracks I don't know much about it I just know it's like a fucked up mother-son relationship much like psycho a lot of people compare it to so Seichi's mother loves him very much and his days pass with a placid regularity, school, friends, even the attention of his attractive classmate Fukichi, until one terrible summer day that all changes. And that's it, like that's really all they give in the summary. I'm gonna be starting this immediately, we'll see how it is. I have other books here that I would like to get to. I wanna kind of prioritize the omnibuses I have here, but I do have other like one volume shots of different manga. Welcome, join me on this journey. I'm going to go read Blood on the Tracks if I finish it before I eat. Um, I'll probably read another one while eating, um, but yeah, we'll see where these next 24 hours take us. Okay, so I just finished Blood on the Tracks Volume 1 and I gave this four stars. This was so eerie and creepy and I really appreciate, like I knew going in that it would be like this, but I think Oshimi really provided this like eeriness throughout the story because it's not as creepy as I think people would expect going in. It's definitely like a slow burn throughout the book. The characters are really doing absolutely like mundane things, like just coming home from school, eating breakfast together. And there's just this sense of dread that permeates throughout the pages because of Oshimi's art style. It was fantastic, I really enjoyed it. And up until the end, you really like don't know how you're feeling. You're not even sure if you're right. And I love that he's making me feel that way. He's making me think like, is she fucked up? Is the mom fucked up or is it me? Am I the one that thinks she's fucked up? And I think that the way you go about this manga is a really interesting experience. So I immediately requested the second volume. I am debating whether to just read all five of them that my library has or continue with something else. And I think just to give like a palette cleanser and just because I'm like really trying to prioritize my thicker manga, I'm going to pick probably Neon Genesis Evangelion, you know. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Anyways, I'm still in the mood to be like fucked up and Neon Genesis Evangelion is a series that absolutely fucks me up. The anime, the manga. Um, I did read the first two volumes in this series previously to um, restarting it this year. I don't know if I've read this one and also a lot of my memory of this series is from the anime. So basically if you don't know what Neon Genesis Evangelion is, it follows this young boy named Shinji and they're in a world that has been attacked multiple times by angels in the sky that come to kind of ruin 
New Tokyo, what is now called New Tokyo. And the kids, Shinji included, are tasked to control these beings called Evas, um, and only the children are able to do so. It's explained much later on why they're the only ones that can do so. But these kids are kind of tasked to go into Eva suits, which are mecha, robot -y type of suits, in order to defeat these angels and save New Tokyo from utter destruction. So this is the third Omnibus volume and it has volumes 7, 8, and 9 in it. So I'm very excited to continue. I love this series so much. I'm getting an Evangelion tattoo soon. So I'll be starting this and continuing it. Um, and then obviously I will come update you about it. Hello, it is now much later in the night. It's around 11 p.m. and I just finished the third volume of Neon Genesis Evangelion. I forgot to mention before also that this is written and created by Yoshiyuki Saramoto, but this is like a rewritten version of the anime show. So it didn't come first, um, but I just wanted to like re-be in this world. So that's why I purchased all of them. This was really amazing. I ended up giving it four stars. The beginning of the book is definitely a bit sluggish as we're like coming off of the tail end of what happened in the last volume, but where this volume really, really shines is that a lot is revealed in this book. And some of it is very forefront. So we're talking about the background of Nerve as a company, um, as a research facility and how it came about. We learn a lot about some of the secrets that Nerve is keeping, the background of some of the characters, like Shinji's parents, like Asuka's parents. Um, and we learn things about these people and what happened to them. And there's a lot of things that are being subtly hinted at. So when you finish the series and know the story, completely. I think you could really pinpoint these like little subtle hints that are being told. And obviously because I have consumed this story multiple times, um, I feel like every time I read the mangas, I like pick up on stuff again. And I definitely read this one before as well. And the fifth child, Kaworu, appears in this one. And I completely forgot about him, to be honest. Um, and I didn't realize that he came in this volume. So that's really, really interesting. And if you know a lot about the series, he is a very interesting character, specifically when it comes to his relation with Rei and how his and Rei's stories are kind of intertwined and they are special and different from the other children. Um, so I'm very excited to pick up the next volume soon. I'm thinking of doing a come with me to get my Neon Genesis Evangelion tattoo and probably finish the last two volumes of the series in that vlog. I think that, that would be really interesting. So let me know if you would like to see it. But yes, the second manga of the day complete. I'm thinking I'm going to read another larger omnibus and I think I still want to be in this like existential crisis type of mood because it's nighttime and I don't really feel like laughing. Um, that's for tomorrow, Kelsey. Tomorrow, Kelsey will be laughing. We won't make everything fall again. But I think I'm going to pick up, what volume is this now? I think this is the fourth omnibus of Full Metal Alchemist. So Full Metal Alchemist is written by Hiromu Arakawa. I really, really love this series. It follows Edward and Alphonse and they tempered with alchemy when they were much, much younger in order to try and revive their mom. And in doing so, Edward lost his arm and his leg and Alphonse became nothing but a soul in a suit of armor. And then Edward has these like metal things that replace his arm and his leg which is why they are the full metal alchemists and then edward becomes a state alchemist and their end goal is to get the philosopher why can't i say that word philosopher's stone in order to restart the ritual that went wrong i definitely meant to say reverse low so i'm very excited i think i'm just gonna pick this up it might be my last manga of the night but if i do finish this maybe i'll just start a shorter one after so See you then! Hello! So the vibe of this vlog has definitely shifted. Um, it is now almost 5 p.m. Um, and I've just finished Full Metal Alchemist Volume 3. It's upstairs. I'm at the gym. Right now, I just need to work on my arms a little bit because I find working on my arms really helps my shoulders. I have a very intense pain on my left shoulder and I find working out at the gym really helps um, with that and making me feel a lot better. So I just want to work out my arms a little bit. Um, and then it's just last night, my boyfriend invited his friends over at midnight and they only left at like 2.30 a.m. I ended up waking up at like 11.30. Had to go fix my nails because some of them looked like the 
paint didn't dry completely so i just went to the salon to fix that came back finished full metal alchemist volume 3 and now i'm gonna work out a little bit i'll give you a full update as to how i feel once i'm back from the gym and then i'm gonna dive in and finish as much manga as i can before the end of the night catch you later hello so i have returned into my home i have finished volume four this entire time i've been saying volume three volume four of the omnibus manga um i don't know why i mix them up but anyways um and i ended up giving this a four stars but in reality it's more of a 3.75 and that's mostly due to the fact that i find the scenes with the state alchemists so the ones that aren't the elric brothers to be a slug to get through and i think it's just because i don't particularly care about their characters there is one moment in the comic with one of the state alchemists named havoc that i thought really brought a personality i guess to the state alchemist because i find even though they are kind of different i do really mix them up it could be the art style it could just be that they all have this same personality or way of speaking that i find them to be a little difficult to read from a little difficult to follow and i don't really care about their stories however i find in this volume everybody's kind of coming together to get the philosopher's stone and they're getting closer and closer to it so the motivations of these groups that have come together to work towards this end goal starting to clash and i think that that was really interesting um and you got a lot of backstory in this book about the war and how the state alchemists were involved also winry's parents and how they passed away and also a lot a lot of revelations about alchemy and the transmuting of the mother of the elric brothers and how it may not be what they had originally thought um so i think that that was a really interesting development and it definitely makes me excited to get into the next volumes but i'm really hoping that in, within the next volumes we're really going to start to see some character development from the state alchemists so that they're a bit more interesting than what they have and are at this current moment so right now i think i want some easy manga to read before i make supper um and i have two shoujo mangas that i would like to get to today i think i'm going to start with my love story volume four um and i just think that these are cute basically my love story by kazuni kawahara follows two main characters but the primary character is takeo goda and he is a giant guy with a giant heart he has a best friend named sunakawa and that is the boy that a lot of the girls in his class love and want to be with and want as a boyfriend and one day takeo saves this girl named yamato and they fall in love and they have a really cute and adorable relationship so i think i'm just going to continue this it won't take me long at all especially because it is a one volume and so far i've been reading the three volumes but i will start this probably read this and then make supper and then maybe get into so cute it hurts volume two which we'll talk about when i get back hello so i'm just here to update that i finished my love story volume four and i really enjoyed this one as well i gave it four stars this is very consistent with the rest of the series it is a happy go lucky story that just makes me laugh makes me feel warm inside this was definitely a like tackling jealousy type of volume because we have Sunakawa's older sister that really likes Takeo and she learns to let Takeo go and move on in a way because Yamato is such a wonderful girlfriend to Takeo and then in the second half of this volume we also see a girl that Takeo helps on his like track team and she starts to fall in love with Takeo and we really see Yamato struggling with jealousy and not really knowing what to do and she's trying her best to show up for Takeo and really be a presence in his life to hopefully like ward the girl off because she really feels inside a genuine like kindness towards this girl and she's like oh maybe that girl just doesn't know I exist but throughout these entire two plot lines Takeo only has eyes for Yamato and I think that that was really beautiful to see and I think it's really important for like teenagers um who might be reading this manga to see that as well and to understand that jealousy is a very natural feeling in relationships but you really need to believe in one another and I really think this manga series dives into cuteness and humor as well as tackling subtleties in subject matters that I think are important for potentially younger readers to read but also adults i don't know if you've dealt with jealousy in your life but maybe yamato can have a few words for you i know i said before that i was going to read another shoujo manga but i think i'm going to read another shonen and i'm going to tackle my hero academia by kohei hirokoshi this is volume three so i would like to pick up more this is a series that follows a character named midoriya who really really wants to be a superhero and they kind of live in this version of the world where teenagers develop superpowers and then they get sent to this superhero academia basically and Midoriya 
thinks that he doesn't have superpowers, that he won't make it until one day he inherits the power of this superhero called All Might. In this volume, um, I don't really know where we are. I just remember that the last volume ended on a really interesting note. Um, My Hero Academia is a book that I really want to get into, a comic series that I really would like to love. Um, But the first two volumes have been sort of average, but I think they're kind of just like regular superhero comics for me. Um, And I'm waiting for this depth to kind of happen so we'll see where this one goes but i think i'm going to pick it up next so it is currently 10 20 p.m and i just finished my my hero academia volume three this was a three stars for me definitely felt like a filler volume what i like in my mangas is to have a bit of depth i don't have a problem with filler mangas i think they can be really fun but i think so early on into a series having a filler volume doesn't feel substantial to me i don't feel like i know the characters enough to kind of warrant this filler volume just to like put a smile on my face in a way after dealing with these really intense villains and almost not surviving they go straight into like a sports competition and i can kind of understand because they are like at a superhero academy and they have to like learn how to deal with real life while also being heroes so i like i kind of get it but at the same time it just felt like something to fill into the pages and give the characters something to do um when in reality they have these very real villains that they have to deal with that i don't think filler volumes are warranted when we don't particularly know the characters i still really like them um but i just wish we got to know more about who they are um what their motivations are and stuff like that and i feel like that's missing and i just don't feel like a filler volume such as this should have came so early when we're still getting to know these characters. So because it is 10 30 p.m. I think I have time for one more volume of something. So I'm definitely not going to get to one piece um this chunker for sure. So it's in between Spy Family and So Cute It Hurts. Um both of them are a volume 2. Both of them I'm still very new to the story so I equally want to get into both of them um but what i think i'm going to do is read spy family volume 2 a lot of people love this series this is written by the way by tatsuya endo very very popular a lot of people really enjoy it i feel left out from the manga reading community this basically follows a man who is kind of tasked with hunting and killing he's a spy hunting and killing this other Person. He finds out that this person has a son enrolled in a private school in their town. So in order to do so, Twilight, the spy, has to kind of recruit a family. So he recruits this little girl to kind of put her into the school. And little does he know that she can read minds. She's telepathic. And then he also hires a fake wife who is an assassin. So he's the spy. She's an assassin. The little kid's telepathic. None of them know that each other have these like spy tendencies except for the little girl obviously because she's telepathic um so i think i'm going to settle with this this will be my final manga of the night and i will either update you when i'm done this or tomorrow morning because i am absolutely exhausted so see you whenever hello so i'm coming here just to say that i finished spy family volume two and i ended up giving this five stars i really 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 enjoyed the series particularly the characters i absolutely love them i love them as a family i think it's really interesting that like they've created this family and they love each other as though they have not met like four months ago and i just think it's so cute i really like anya's relationship with her parents i really like the growing relationship between your and twilight um and also adding yours brother yuri into the mix i think will make for an interesting dynamic although i find yuri to be very weird um so we'll see where that goes i don't i don't know what to expect i'm really liking anya's forefront in this manga and seeing her at school and seeing her make friends and also this cute like hatred towards damien desmond um that i think will make for a really interesting dynamic especially as we move forward with twilight's plan to integrate into the desmond family using anya um i thought this was absolutely adorable loved it gave it five stars seeing as it is 11 p.m right now i think i'm gonna go to bed um or at least get ready for bed if i have time in bed maybe i'll read blood on the tracks volume two because i still have that out from the library and i would like to read it um so if i do or if i don't i will see you later tomorrow most likely in better lighting hello besties let's end the vlog so unlike what i said last night i did not in fact read blood on the tracks volume two i decided just to take a breather um i was extremely tired yesterday and i think it is mostly because it was a long weekend i did a lot of physical activity so i was in quite a bit of pain 
in my body, like a good pain, but still pain. And I was just like falling asleep on the couch, listening to reading sprints. And I realized like, I just need to go to bed. I just need to relax and watch TikToks. And I know that that is not the most productive thing, but sometimes you just need to like turn off your brain and watch TikToks um, for an hour before you go to sleep. And that is what I chose to do last night. But let's go over what I did read for the 24 hours or so that I read starting Sunday night. We read Blood on the Tracks volume one and I gave this four stars, really enjoyed it. I might read Blood on the Tracks volume two at the end of the month just because I liked it so much. <laughs> then of course I read my fave Neon Genesis Evangelion volume three three of the omnibuses and I give this four stars really enjoyed it I will always love Neon Genesis Evangelion I think there's super interesting discussions here about depression and our roles in life and the expectations that we sometimes put onto children um, and also the expectations that we have on ourselves and in the world. It's very meta, it's very cool. And I think if you have not even dived into Neon Genesis Evangelion, I would highly recommend the anime. I think it's amazing. The mangas are just as good. Then I read Full Metal Alchemist volume four of the omnibuses, not three, like I said a million times in this vlog. And I ended up giving this four stars, more like a 3.75, but that is mostly due to the fact that I find these stories that involve these state alchemists to not be as developed as the stories surrounding the Elric brothers. And I expect that to be more developed. I just think in chunks, it's harder to really understand where we're going with the state alchemist storyline. But I still really enjoy this. I love, 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 love the humor in these mangas. And I always like find myself chuckling. I think it's really funny. And I would still highly recommend this series. And then I picked up a sort of palette cleanser, a shoujo manga of My Love Story volume four. I absolutely adore this series. I think it's so, so, so cute. I think it really shows a healthy relationship to young adults who might be diving into this manga series for the first time. And I think it's absolutely adorable. I think it's really realistic. If you hear my dryer in the background, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Okay, it's done. <laughs> um, I love this series. I think it's so cute. This series also makes me laugh out loud. I absolutely adore the art style. I absolutely adore where this storyline is going and I cannot wait to pick up more. This is a series that I absolutely want to continue. If we go into then series that I'm debating DNF, unfortunately My Hero Academia is on the chopping block in a sense. Um, I definitely want to read another volume of this before I really solidify my thoughts, but this was another three star read. The last two volumes, this one included, have been three star reads for me. I was really, really enamored with the first volume and I think since then the story has kind of been slacking. It feels very filler to me when we don't really know the characters. I've really expressed that in this vlog. I just expected a lot more, I think, from My Hero Academia, so it might be my own fault, but I definitely want to purchase volume four just to see how I feel about it. And if that's the case, I will be dropping this series but volume three I gave three stars and then we ended the night on a fantastic read Spy Family volume two. I absolutely adore this series so far. I think it's really really cute, really really funny. Um, I absolutely love the family dynamics in this book. I think the humor is there and something I'm realizing with a lot of these mangas is that I either love like existential dread or just pure humor and I think that Spy Family is really giving people like that really really good story those really like interesting found family dynamics with also this hilarious result of having a mismatch of characters that need to like be together and like work together and i just think it's really really funny i highly recommend i give this five stars it was definitely the winner of the vlog and that's it those were all of the mangas i read for this vlog i really hope you enjoyed it please let me know down below if you've read any of these mangas do you like them do you hate them especially do you think i should consider continuing my hero academia does it get a lot better later on is it worth chugging through these filler volumes, please let me know. And of course, if you would like to follow me on any of my other social medias, I do leave a link down below to my Twitter, Goodreads, and Instagram if you would like to follow me there. And because it is the end of the vlog, please do not forget to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. I tell you every time, but it does wonders for my channel. It makes me feel really good. And that's it. I never know how to end these things, so I will see you next time. Okay, bye!